My name is Richard Lyle, and today we are going to look at one of my recent paintings up close. The painting is the Farmer's Museum at Cooperstown. I am going to try to answer two questions that I am asked most. Question one, why do I use an underpainting? Question two, how do I paint detail into my painting when painting outdoors? I think often the best way to explain something is through example. That is how I'm going to show you why I use an underpainting. We are going to look up close to the fence posts in the painting. In these close-ups, you can see how the underpainting is bleeding through the violet layer of paint. When you look first at the fence post, you see the dominant violent color. When overwhelmed the side tones, the magic of the underpainting is it sets up for a happy accident. If you look close at the real fence post, the one in the painting, you would say it's perfect. I will tell you, if I tried to paint the fence post without the underpainting, I would spend all day on just the post and it would still not look better. When you are plain air painting, you have to look for as many happy accents as possible. The underpainting is the best way to set you up for happy accents. Plain and simple. Here, in a close-up of the sky, you can see how the orange underpainting comes through the blue sky. This makes the sky more vibrant and not monotone. If anything, I think every artist should try an orange underpainting and see for themselves if the sky it looks more vibrant. Next, I'm going to show you how I model detail into a painting. We're going to add the detail in the center of interest, which is the sunflowers. It's always safe to add detail into the center of interest. Often, if you add too much detail throughout the whole painting, it will look overworked. Now, we will look up close and see how I first added the bright leaves that the sun is hitting. I use these as highlights to help organize the overall large shape. Then I decided to sprinkle in some of the sunflowers. I also decided to add some other leaves that did not have direct sunlight shining on them, but still stood out. These leaves were cool green. Now it's time to look at smaller sections of the flowers but still paint big shapes of that smallest section. I tell people to see small, but always paint big. In this close-up of the sunflower on the left, you can see how I painted the one leaf with two brush strokes. The sunflower I painted with a few random brush strokes. You can see how the brush picked up colors from the center of the flower. The colors look like reflected colors, 
and is another example of how happy accidents happen. Also, I would like to say that there is no perfect sunflower. Nature likes to be random, not predictable. Now, let's look at the top section of the painting. Here in the top section of the painting, I did not need to do much at work at all. The paint is magically doing a better job than I could do by trying. See how natural it looks and how it glows. Now, let's look at the bottom of the sunflowers. Just keep looking smaller. You can see how I had to make an adjustment to one flower. In the wet paint, I brushed out some of the flower and then added back some of the yellow petals. You can see how the whole flower just glows. Before I added the two flowers in the lower right corner that were blown over by the wind, I noticed I could see the stems at the point. I also saw at that time I could see large number of stems. When painting outdoors, the light is always changing. Things come and go. That is one of the great things about painting in plain air. The camera can only see one hundredth of a second. But it's also one of the hardest things to know how to use correct. Instead of trying to paint in these stems as I saw them, I just randomly painted in a whole bunch of this stems. As I knew, as the light changed, they would come and disappear and I would see different sections and all. It would be impossible to paint. So I painted in a whole bunch of the stems and then I painted leaves in over top of them and let the stems peek through. Let's look at the background. The big yellow tree. This is not the center of interest. So I do not look at the area as close. I look more at the big shapes. Looking at the smaller areas just to see if they help tie the painting together. I keep moving the areas all over the canvas. Sometimes large areas, sometimes smaller. This brings the whole painting up together and I can stop at any point when I feel the painting is at the best it can be. Next, let's look at the pumpkins. First I looked at the whole bottom, one third of the painting. And at that point, I may have spent just a few minutes. Then, I wanted to see smaller areas closer to the center of interest and see how good it ties into the center of interest. Then, I wanted to zoom in on a smaller area to see the construction of the pumpkins. Know how the pumpkins are painted with just a few brush strokes each. The darker foundation painting is left untouched between the brush strokes, which helps you see the different shapes of the pumpkins. Here is another look at the complete painting. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. The subscribe helps me with my standing with YouTube. Thank you.